In this video, I will determine the density of an unknown metal using the volume and mass data in this open office spreadsheet. So first, we will select all the data. Look for the chart icon. Click. This is the default column chart. We'll switch to the XY scatter chart. Finish. We don't need the legend, so I'm going to delete this. And then right click somewhere here. All right. Insert titles. Determining the density of unknown matter. Uh, you can think of any other title. As long as your title is concise and informative, the x axis is the volume in milliliters, the y axis, mass in grams. Now we'll do a linear regression. Right click any of the seven data points, anyone. And then insert trend line. It's going to be linear. We will show the equation. We will show the coefficient of determination. We know it's linear because we know mass is equal to density times volume. And over here, you can change the style and the color of the line. All right, we have the equation here. We have r squared value here. But we are looking at too many sig figures. If you look at the volume, some of them have only three sig figures. So I just right clicked this equation, click Format, click Numbers. Over here, choose Number. And then maybe at most two decimal places. All right, so now this is more reasonable. If you are presenting 12 sig figures, that will give the reader a wrong impression about the precision of your research data. All right, so this is better. And we can see the slope is 19.66. This is going to be the determined value for the unknown metal. It's 19.66 gram per milliliter. There's a problem with the intercept. Supposedly, the intercept should be zero. Why? Because again, mass is equal to density times volume plus zero. So the intercept should be zero. But those are, well, Presumably experimental data, they are not perfect, and we see a small intercept here. In Microsoft Excel, you may set or force the intercept to be zero. But using this open office spreadsheet, I was not able to find that option. But this is okay. Now let's change the number of decimal places over here, Format, Access, and then we can click Numbers, and somehow uh, it choose the source format. We can reduce the number of decimal places for the vertical axis. All right, so I think this is neat. Also, we don't need to see those 4.000 here or 6.000 here. There's no need. So format access, and we can uncheck the source format. We can change this number of decimal places to zero. So this graph looks better. And also you can change the font size if you want to. Just right click and format. All right, so we have area. We can uh, change the font size. Uh, we'll change it to maybe 13, okay. So this looks bigger, and we can do this one as well. Font size, uh, 13. Okay, and then the trend line, right click, format the equation. 
and uh, maybe 14. All right, so now it looks better. Uh, this is one way to determine the density. I'm going to show you a different way. What I will do is this. We have seven objects that are made of the same metal. So why don't I just create another column, density, in gram per milliliter. All right, so over here. And then I'm going to use the equation. It's equal to mass divided by volume. And I got the density. All right, and then I will get seven different values. And I want to be sure the number of decimal places makes sense. So right click, form cell, and click number. Let's keep two decimal places. All right, so we have seven values. Now I will get the average of the seven values. The equation is average. So type equal sign and then average and then select all the data. So this is the average. And now I'm going to get the standard deviation equals STDEV, standard deviation. Again, I'm going to select all the data here. All right. So now I will format these two numbers. Format cells, number two six figures. All right. So this number is the average. I'm going to label this. And this number is standard deviation. All right, so you can see if we take the average, it's 19.55. If we use the graph, it's 19.66. Uh, they are very similar to each other. The standard deviation tells us about the precision of the seven data points. Are they close to each other? Are they not? With such a small standard deviation, only 0.4, I think our research data are, in general, very close to each other. So this is about precision. The standard deviation tells us something about the precision. The average, or we'll have to compare the average with the literature value to understand the accuracy of our data. Uh, assuming this metal is gold, gold has a density of 19.3 gram per milliliter. So in this case, uh, we have a fairly high accuracy and a fairly good precision. So both are pretty good. 